Hi there, welcome back. What's your opinion on technical indicators? And do you use them as features in your predictive models for algorithmic trading? Because many people consider reading technical indicators like reading tea leaves. And there is some truth to that, okay? But I kind of have a more centrist approach because I definitely understand these people that consider technical indicators useless to a certain extent, but I also understand the newbie traders that kind of start trading and then they look at these technical indicators like some sources of alpha because you know you can use for example the bollinger bands and you get signals for overbought or oversold and then you might think okay now i can use the bollinger bands levels so i can put them into my data set and then train my model on that so i can get some sort of alpha but that's not that simple and in this video i'm going to talk about both cases you know both whether technical indicators are useless or whether technical indicators are the best thing that could ever happen to you. But before I start, I just want to thank you for being here and don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to my channel if you find this type of content interesting, okay? I do videos on data science, machine learning, mostly financial data science and machine learning, so definitely click that subscribe button and check out my other videos as well. Now, coming back to the topic, first let's see exactly how we can uh, first create these technical indicators, okay? And the first and the easiest way to do it is by using TALib, which is a Python package. And this Python package contains standard implementations of over 200 technical indicators that you can use for technical analysis, okay? These are super easy to implement as they only use the price and volume data. So, for example, if you have some historical data that is just limited to price, volume, and I don't know, high, low, uh, open and close, then you can easily implement these with this package. One thing you have to be mindful of is that there are some issues with some indicators. You know, based on some threads that I read on Reddit and Stack Overflow, I found out there are some indicators that might not be properly implemented. You know, so apparently there are some uh, indicators that you need to be wary of when using. Okay, so if you rely on this package, you need to be aware of the risks. Now, personally, I don't really use this library too much because whenever I implement some indicators into my trading systems, I prefer to implement them manually. So I have more control over the implementation. But of course, this takes a lot of time. So if you just wanna play around with technical analysis and you wanna see exactly if you might have some sort of strategy that might work, you can definitely use TALib and this can be very useful. It can be very lucrative to do this pretty fast, implement your strategy and then backtest it afterwards okay but if you do live trading i would definitely encourage you to check the implementation of these algorithms so that you understand fully what each indicator does and what it actually shows not to be surprised afterwards that you had some wrong calculation and then your whole machine learning model kind of was off balance so be wary of that so now that you're aware of these risks, you can easily implement the Bollinger Bands with just a couple of lines of code. And you could literally use tens of indicators, okay? Tens of indicators, add them as features to your data set, and then you can just feed them to your machine learning model. But again, I would advise against that for various reasons, and one of them being multicollinearity, for example, in the case of regression problems. So be wary of just adding tens of indicators with the idea in mind that the machine learning model will find some patterns there. Imagine if we just add momentum indicators and then reversion to the mean indicators, and then we add some volatility indicators and volume indicators in our data set, it's just gonna be a whole bunch of mess, okay? It's gonna be very, very noisy. So we need to be aware of this. We don't want to just throw this data set at a machine learning algorithm and let it find some patterns because it's not gonna find any patterns there, you know? Like what I encourage you to do instead is think about a theory, have some hypothesis in mind, and then find indicators that are suitable for that specific theory of yours. And then you can go ahead and back this that and then try to find some patterns that way. So don't just throw the whole kitchen sink at it. Don't create a data set with hundreds of features and then hope that a machine learning algorithm will make sense of that noise. You know, as I was saying earlier, there are many people that say that technical analysis is useless and they use this as a blank statement. You know, all technical analysis is useless. And I would say that they are wrong. And I'm gonna tell you why. You see, technical analysis is made up of multiple components that are just tools that can help you understand the price series, understand the historical data better 
so that maybe you could make sense of the future. Of course, this is not that easy to do because there are multiple things that come into play, not just the price and volume or the high, low, open and close, right? There are many factors, okay, sentiment uh, of the market. There are many other uh, features that you need to take into account if you want to make certain predictions. But again, they still provide you with some information about that specific security. If technical analysis would be useless, then historical data itself would be useless, correct? There would be no need to know the previous price or the traded volume of a security. I mean, why would you, right? Because you'd assume that all of the information you need is baked into the current price. So that would lead us to the assumption that a price series has no memory. And that is false again, because the market involves securities traded with goals in mind. You know, we have individuals and institutions that hold these securities with future goals in mind. You know, regardless whether they're individuals and institutions or you have like some machine learning algorithms that do this specific trading but nevertheless there is a goal in mind so therefore definitely historical data is relevant you know you cannot just toss it away and think like everything is currently baked into the current price so clearly there is something more to reading technical indicators than just reading tea leaves you know there is some information there that can be used to your advantage since we see that technical analysis is not completely useless let's take the opposite view okay let's think about technical analysis as being the best thing that you need in order to predict the markets and this is completely wrong as well and this is because technical analysis is just a tool that we have okay as i was saying earlier it's just a tool it needs to be used correctly and especially when you use it with machine learning and algorithmic trading systems you know you need to know exactly what these indicators show and you have to work towards creating a data set that is based on some hypothesis that you have and that hypothesis needs to be backtested. Imagine everybody has access to technical indicators and there is no information edge in using them. There may have been, I don't know, back in the 80s, but we are a long way from then. So as soon as we understand that other people have access to the same information, the chances of us arbitraging something in the markets are very, very slim. I mean, nowadays, everybody has access to the same historical data, the same indicators, the same machine learning algorithms, and more or less the same computing power. Thinking that you have a quantitative analysis edge over others, nowadays is just fooling yourself. That advantage is long gone. What do you have, or what you should have, is a solid understanding of what technical indicators and other features show and make good judgment calls based on experience and intuition. Because your experience, the qualitative aspect of trading decisions, paired of course with quant capabilities, can act as a proper edge in the markets. Otherwise, if you just put together, I don't know, 200 indicators in a data set, and then you feed it to a machine learning algorithm, or if you handpick the indicators that kind of confirm a bias of yours without a good hypothesis behind it, then predicting the markets with technical analysis, of course, then it becomes like reading tea leaves. So the main rule here is to get familiar with what these indicators show and make sure that you understand how to interpret them because this will lead you to make better decisions, okay? You can definitely rely on them to a certain extent, but make sure that you understand their shortcomings and then you can use them proper and wisely. Okay, think about it. Let's look at Bollinger Bands and RSI levels. Okay, you have, for example, RSI at 30 and 70. Think about it. Why is it 30 or, and 70? Why isn't uh, 31 and 69 or 71? You know, these round numbers don't make sense. So you need to be wary of these. You know, they might have been just chosen uh, randomly just because they're round numbers and everybody considered them as being relatively okay, right? But you you also need to think about this right let's talk about let's say moving averages what if we have 12 20 and 36 day moving averages right why shouldn't we use i don't know 13 uh 22 and 48 day moving averages you see if you want a certain outcome you can easily find a technical indicator that will confirm that bias if you really want to buy you'll definitely shop around for the perfect indicator that will confirm that's the right thing to do 
Imagine creating a data set with a thousand features and I don't know, you have maybe a hundred features just with moving averages, okay? And let's say you would feed that to a machine learning model and you would tell that machine learning model, okay, go ahead and predict whether to buy or sell that security. The best machine learning model in the world, you know what it would do? It would just flip a coin. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this type of content and I'll see you in the next one.